It's game day once again for the San Antonio Spurs and the team is hoping for better luck on the court tonight. This after losing to the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, Kelvin Johnson did not play for the second straight game. He's out with a right hamstring injury. The Pelicans were also missing a couple of their starters. And despite that, the Pelicans led by as many as 23 points and opened the fourth quarter with a 19 point lead. Now, Jeremy Sohan scored a career high 23 points for San Antonio, but it wasn't enough. The Spurs fall to New Orleans. That final score, 126 to 117. Yeah, I think it's just becoming more comfortable and, you know, more confident. Um, I play with a lot of energy and, you know, when, once st things slow down, it's, it's a lot easier. So, um, yeah, maybe I had a career high, but uh, we still lost, so it doesn't really matter. The Spurs are in Florida today to take on the Orlando Magic. Tip-off is set for six tonight. Well, this year, the world of sports saw some serious highs and incredible lows. As 2022 draws to an end, ABC's Megan Norwood has a look back at the year in sports. Super Bowl 56. Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup led the Rams on a game-winning drive over the Cincinnati Bengals. Aaron Donald finally earning a ring. The University of Georgia ending a 41-year drought, rolling Alabama in the College Football National Championship. From champions to controversy, athletes continued to make headlines. WNBA star Brittany Griner. She's detained in Russia, facing drug charges after being stopped at an airport with a bag allegedly holding vape cartridges containing hashish oil. Brittany Griner heading back to the U.S. after nearly 300 days of imprisonment. NBA star Kyrie Irving benched in the wake of tweeting about an anti-Semitic film. Cinderella arriving for March Madness. St. Peter's making an extraordinary run to the Elite Eight. Kansas Jayhawks taking home their fourth NCAA championship following a comeback win over North Carolina. Becky Hammond returning to the WNBA as a coach, leading the Las Vegas Aces to their first championship. South Carolina defeating UConn in the national championship, making Don Staley the first black coach to win two Division I titles. In the NBA, MVP Steph Curry returning the Warriors to glory, defeating the Celtics to win their fourth title in eight years. The Houston Astros celebrating another World Series, throwing a combined no-hitter and defeating the Phillies. Yankees MVP Aaron Judge making history. breaking the American League home run record and earning a long-term deal to remain in pinstripes. The U.S. women's national team also making history, signing a landmark equal pay deal, while the men's team advancing to the knockout round of the World Cup on Christian Pulisic's memorable goal. Legendary coach Mike Krzyzewski waving goodbye. It's hard for me to believe this is over. I've done what I've loved my whole life. Tom Brady also retiring, and only to announce his return to the NFL 40 days later. Serena Williams honored at the U.S. Open, thrilling fans who didn't want to say goodbye. I'm just so grateful to every single person that's ever said go Serena in their life. We remember the epic games, the champions, superstars that left the court, and the legends who left us with incredible memories of their triumphs. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. And if your team didn't win in 2022, there's always 2023. That's so. right. What a year for sports. Wins, losses, controversy, retirements. Yeah. They had it all. All right. Well, a streaming platform is making changes how Netflix could get in the way of your next binge if you share your account with someone else. And for many, Christmas morning is all about opening colorful boxes. One family is making a shift. Their tree won't have presents underneath it but there will be lots of gifts. All right, 28 degrees out there. It warmed up a whole degree. It's dry and it's sunny, but Justin, it's cold. So cold, so cold. Uh, it is hard to be outside for any 
long amount of time unless you got lots of jackets on and the temperatures tonight will go back down into the teens likely here on San Antonio. So expect another hard freeze tonight. I want to show you a picture on our case that connects. We got a lot of great pictures in, but this really does illustrate things. Uh, that is a pool, but you can see all the ice that is collected uh, that did collect this morning uh, with temperatures as cold as they were. That was up in the Timberwood Park area where temperatures probably got down to about 15 or so. And you can see what that will do. Uh, freezing a lot of things there. And uh, we'll be sharing more pictures with you throughout the day on our KSAC Connect. Let me show you the lows this morning. We got down to 16 here in San Antonio, 12 burning stage, 12 in Kerrville, 16 in New Braunfels, 15 was the low in Seguin. Very, very cold. And here's where we are now, 27. So we have warmed up some. We'll see if we get above that freezing mark. It'll be a close call this afternoon. 25 Bull Verde, 28 New Braunfels, 25 now in Seguin. And we are up to 31 in Pleasanton, so it looks like you will get above freezing there. Our case at 12 hour forecast, 32 at 2 o'clock, 33, 3 p.m. And uh, by this evening, we're back down to 28 at 8 o'clock and eventually back down into the low 20s by midnight and teens by tomorrow morning. We're going to take another look at the travel forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Justin. Well, a shooting in Paris, central Paris, has left three people dead and three others injured. That's right. The shooter is now in police custody, but no motive has been found as of yet. Alexis Christophorus with ABC describes that deadly attack. Police cordoned off a busy street in central Paris after a gunman allegedly went on a shooting rampage Friday afternoon. The city's mayor says it took place at a Kurdish cultural center and nearby businesses. A 69-year-old suspect was taken into custody and transferred to a hospital where he's reportedly in stable condition. Authorities confirm the alleged attacker was already known to police from two prior incidents. One of those incidents, an attack on a migrant camp where he slashed tents with a sword in December of last year. Year. He had recently been released from prison. The city's mayor says they do not know the motive for these shootings. The Paris prosecutor's office says potential racist motives for today's attack will be part of the investigation. Anti-terrorism prosecutors have been in contact with investigators. France did see a string of deadly attacks by Islamic extremists in 2015 and 16 and remains on alert for terrorism-related violence. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. More charges for the former FedEx driver accused of killing a seven-year-old girl from North Texas. Tanner Horner is held on a $1.5 million bond for the capital murder and aggravated kidnapping. He now faces three additional counts of sexual assault of a minor from back in 2013 in Wise County, Texas. Now, authorities say uh, the new charges aren't related to the current case, but coverage has encouraged Horner's previous victims to come forward. He is scheduled to appear in court on January 5th. Now, the January 6th House Committee released its final report, and it's more than 800 pages long. The report, report breaks down the events surrounding the Capitol attack. ABC's Jay O'Brien shares how the report affects former President Donald Trump. Overnight, the January 6th committee releasing its final report. 845 pages, the product of an 18-month investigation, interviewing more than 1,000 witnesses, obtaining texts, emails, and other documents from Trump's inner circle. <laughs> and unearthing new video from the Capitol attack. In its report, the committee saying the violence that day was the fault of one man, Donald Trump, and what they call Trump's multi-part plot to overturn the 2020 election, writing none of the events of January 6th would have happened without him. The committee making several recommendations, including that Trump and others who work to overturn the election be disqualified from ever holding government office. He is unfit for any office. The report mirroring the committee's 10 public hearings where lawmakers unveiled their findings to the American people, outlining Trump's repeated election lies, which his own advisors told him were false, as well as what the committee described as a pressure campaign to get federal, state, and local officials to subvert the results of the election. Those efforts, the committee says, culminated in the deadly Capitol attack. In the end, he summoned a mob to Washington and knowingly they were armed and angry, pointed them to the Capitol and told them to fight like hell. 
The report is released the same day lawmakers are voting on a massive package of legislation, which includes reforms to the Electoral Count Act, the law that Trump and his allies abused to try to have the 2020 election results tossed out in Congress. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Georgetown University has hired Adnan Sayed to work for its Prisons and Justice Initiative. The subject of the popular podcast serial, Sayed was released from prison in September when his murder conviction was overturned. He served 23 years of life of uh, life sentence. Now the initiative aims to address the root causes of mass incarceration and how to stop them. It offers educational and training programs for incarcerated people and those returning to society. The U.S. economy is growing too fast. Maybe too fast. Why that might be bad news. Scientists have discovered dolphins with Alzheimer's. What this could mean for the future of neurology. More and more job seekers are demanding better salaries. How much they're asking for, coming up later in the show. The American economy grew faster than expected in the third quarter of the year. The Commerce Department states that the U.S. GDP grew at, at a rate of 3.2 percent between July and September. That's higher than last month's uh, when the increase was only about 2.9 percent. Now, this serves to show the Federal Reserve's interstate rate hike meant to fight inflation. It's not really working as strongly as intended. Consumer spending isn't slowing down either. And with the rate hike steadily increasing, economists are worried this will topple into a recession. All right, get this. There's a new movement taking off, and it's, it's called hashtag no toys for Christmas. It's been going around TikTok, and of course, it's sparking a debate. Well, Rihanna and Ali with ABC explains how some parents are creating new holiday traditions. For many families, it's the quintessential Christmas scene. Kids rushing down the stairs to open up their presents. Good job. But for Gabrielle and Carlos Flores of California and their three young kids, this Christmas morning will look a lot different. What brought on the idea of not having Christmas gifts this year for your kids? It's more of let's build a tradition so when, you know, God forbid we're not here, they will go and keep these traditions to their kids. And it's more about the giving aspect of everything and not just the presents. Gabrielle going viral on TikTok after sharing her plan to skip traditional presents in favor of experiences. So how did the conversation go? So we talked about um, different experiences. Let's do things that we can remember rather than something that's going to be thrown out in a month or two. And she's not alone. The hashtag no Christmas gifts trending with more than 27,000 parents who plan to do the same. Experts suggest there are pros and cons to making that decision. There are lots of pros to going giftless. Experiences foster more gratitude. The memories of an experience live on much longer. Going giftless can have its drawbacks. Your kids may feel cheated out of a really fun holiday. So this can be a really tough change for kids to accept. As for the Flores family, they say wow. their decision is about recognizing the true meaning of Christmas. Do you think your kids will thank you later? I really think they're learning that Christmas is more of a holiday season about family, about traditions. Santa! Let's bring Santa. it back to the reality of the foundation of at the spirit of magic of Christmas. And taking a look at outside, it's cold, but it is a beautiful day. It's sunny, not a single cloud in the sky, Justin. Yeah, you know, you look at that, you would think, man, it's, it is like warm out there. It looks that way, but it's just, it's not. 27 so far today. 16 was the low this morning. That ties for the second coldest uh, low on this date. The coldest was six. That was back in 1989. That was a really cold year, if you remember that year. Uh, the record high is 83, so back in 1972. We will be nowhere near that today. Another really cold night on the way tonight. We take a look coming up.
All right, get this. Researchers discovered animals can also suffer from memory loss like humans. Three dolphins stranded along the Scottish coast showed signs of Alzheimer's. In after-death brain exams, scientists found lesions in the animal's lobes similar to those of people who suffered from the same disease. Published in the December's European Journal of Neuroscience, the research found evidence that animals can also develop Alzheimer's, a disease that was once thought to only exist in humans. Now, the study provides an even deeper insight into neurology and what other uh, species of mammals can suffer from. And the winter storm is here and it, it's causing delivery delays on your holiday presents. FedEx issued a statement this morning stating its hubs in Indianapolis and Memphis are suffering major disruptions. Meanwhile, UPS announced similar issues with various regions they serve around the country are also affected by the storm. Miles of highways in the U.S. are shut down right now and more than 3,000 flights, uh, flight takeoffs are canceled because of the weather. Yeah, I saw a meme that said, uh, just stop tracking. It's all in God's hands. Now. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> Kind of like this is. weather. <laughs> That's probably true. And uh, I'm afraid there's going to be some more delays along the way, whether it be with FedEx or whether you're traveling, just because this is a big winter system and it has covered a lot of real estate. Cold in many spots, but also there's wintry weather up across the northeast. If you're hitting the road today, traveling across Texas, no real issues. The roads here are not icy by any stretch of the imagination, but you will want to make sure your tires are inflated. When it gets cold, they obviously become underinflated. Uh, 24 degrees in Dallas today, 32 Houston. That's it. 37 in Brownsville, usually one of the warm spots, and it's only 37 there this afternoon. Corpus Christi, 38. If you're heading west to El, uh, El Paso, 41 there. But clear skies for most of the state of Texas. And then as we look at the big picture for the country, if you have flights out today, it's the northeast that's the problem. The darker the pink, the bigger the issue. And we're seeing that in a lot of spots up across the Great Lakes and uh, the northeast of New England today it gets better tomorrow so christmas eve is a little better travel day and so is christmas we don't see a lot of issues other than maybe some snow up north uh, so it will get better hopefully next couple of days uh, in general it's the northern tier states that are experiencing all the issues nothing here down to the south so we go outside for you not a cloud in the sky at least not over san antonio there is a cloud bank you can see it way off in the distance but at, uh, as well south of the city. 27 right now, 28 Stinson, 28 Kelly, 26 at Randolph, trying to warm up, but we still got a good northerly wind right now, anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's still only 23 in Fredericksburg, 23 in Rock Springs. That's a place that started out at nine this morning. Temperature of nine, uh, 29 in Del Rio, 29 in New Valley, 30 right now in Carrizo Springs and around Bear County, trying to get up to that 30 degree mark. We are there at Rio Medina and Hondo at this hour. Wind gusts still gusting to around 20, 25. These winds should begin to subside here next couple of hours. And while we're not going to get completely rid of the wind, uh, there still will be some gusts, maybe 10 to 15. I think these winds will really start to come down. The wind chill right now, 16 here in town. That's what it feels like. Feels like 15 in Canyon Lake, 23 in Pleasanton. And that is a huge improvement from the wind chills we were seeing earlier, which were in the single digits this morning. The other side to all of this, this air is really dry, cold and dry, and you got dew points in the negative numbers. Now, this is some of the driest air we see. It is going to be some of the driest air that we see here around South Texas and uh, around Texas in general. So if you walk outside, you're going to notice that your skin gets dry and cracked really quickly. Chapstick, good idea to have with you with this kind of weather and these kind of dew points. So just a heads up there, just another side to all of this. And as we look at the uh, big picture here, I mentioned that cloud deck to our south. It is shifting south at this point. And then you've got the clouds in the Gulf of Mexico. I always think this is so cool. When you get the really cold air moving over the warm air of the Gulf, you get this kind of cloud formation. It kind of looks like streaks down there across the Gulf of Mexico. And that's that cold air interacting with the warmer Gulf of Mexico. Our case at 12 hour forecast, 32, two o'clock today, 33 at 3 p.m. We're gonna try to get up above freezing for a few hours and then we fall right back below that mark and into the 20s by tonight and teens by tomorrow morning. We start off Christmas Eve at 17, 41 for a high on Saturday, 49 on Sunday after starting off at 22. Still a freeze Monday morning, but we do warm up next week. We're back in the 70s, some balmy weather by the middle part of next week, guys. Just hold on till Wednesday. That's right. All right, Netflix is putting its foot down with password sharing. What the streaming platform is now doing to prevent that coming up. 
And a new survey finds job seekers requesting better salaries. Learn how much they're asking for next. Netflix is putting an end to password sharing. The streaming giant has pulled the plug on users sharing accounts with friends and family. Patty, this is definitely a hot topic. ABC's Trevor Alt gives you more information before the start of the year and uh, your TV bench marathon. Some Netflix users' streams may soon be running dry as password sharing is coming to an end. 2023, the streaming giant says it will start cracking down on subscribers sharing accounts with friends and family, as the company claims more than 100 million non-paying households are accessing the service. See you on the other side. On the other side. With this password crackdown, it will encourage multiple accounts per household, but also now will have the consumers start to weigh in about what is really important to them. You are the bane of my existence and the object of all my desires. Despite hits like Emily in Paris and Bridgerton, Netflix has been trying to combat their losses. In March, they began testing new features in select countries that allowed subscribers to add users to their accounts for a small fee. And just last month, they launched a lower cost ad supported membership option for $6.99 a month though subscription analytics firm Antenna says that was by far the least popular plan. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. Welcome, gang. We got a great weekend. Netflix is also hoping to have a huge weekend with today's release of Glass Onion, the sequel to the massively popular mystery Knives Out. This is truly delightful. The film with its star-studded cast, including Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, and Kate Hudson, already had a limited release in theaters, a move questioned by box office experts. Netflix didn't release any official numbers, but they could have kept it in the theater and ran the gauntlet through the Thanksgiving holiday up until now, if they chose to. I, I just thought maybe there was a prize or something. All right, national salary expectations have reached their highest level in a decade. A new labor market survey done by the New York Federal Reserve found on average the lowest salary job applicants are willing to accept is $74,000. That is the highest the survey has recorded since 2014. Now, most people are asking for that are uh, 45 years old and younger, but employers need not fret. Their survey also found fewer current employees are job hunting and even more are happy with their wages, benefits and promotions. Well, folks, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Tis the season for SA Live's Christmas special. They have an encore presentation for us today, and we hear there will be a ton of great food, fun, and uh, just more food for the family. Uh, Mike and Fiona. Well, coming up today on SA Live, our Christmas special, and we sort of get the day off because two of Santa's favorite, <laughs> hardest working elves are going to be pretty much taken over. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. And we are going to meet baby reindeer for their first flight with Santa and tell you where you can meet these fluffy North Pole dwellers right here in town. So many great facts about them. Also, we take you to a Christmas tree farm that's been keeping the Christmas spirit alive in the hill country for more than 30 years. And everyone is thinking about Christmas savings this year, so we share great deals on dining, shopping, and family fun experiences for the whole holiday season. And of course, the holidays are all about food, and a couple from our KSAD family share holiday recipes from some of your favorite on-air talent. <laughs> and Carino Cortez with La Familia Cortez shares three hot chocolate recipes to warm you up this winter.